Oh man, it really does feel like there's a battle on between Disney, Lucasfilm and Amazon to see who produces the worst show of the year and this is episode three we're going to do a really quick review of it because again this show is atrocious this show is abysmal this show is the oc slash dawson's creek with a hint of willow and if you could maybe subscribe share out the video get the message out there a small bit show people that it's not as easy to gaslight us anymore it's not as easy to pull the wool over our eyes we know what's going on we know what you're producing it's absolutely terrible so this episode starts with another flashback and it's actually borman and he's having a conversation with kit and it's probably mm, one of the most interesting parts of this episode but again it's another exposition dump jewel heir of chimerian empire tiberius is the mother of annabelle fay of the grove forged in the carius of pure chimerian she assembled a lux arcana with a magic key that activated the armor for the 2000 debt dealers did you get all that because i had to write that shit down all that information was dumped upon us in the first couple of seconds of this episode and you think to yourself how much more can you put up with how much more of these exposition dumps, how much more of this vomit, this verbal diarrhea can you actually put up with before we actually get a decent segment of an episode? So Kit and Borman have a bit of a conversation. Again, he doesn't give her the full story about her father. That's going to take another 45 minutes to get that little bit out. They kind of talk about Elora and the powers that she has. And because Kit has seen the flower growing, she's like, oh my God, this woman might actually possess the power to save my brother. And I'm absolutely pissed off because of it. And it's the typical reaction of your spoiled brat, social media, Kardashian, whatever. So the guy from the office shows up. There's a bit of a Mexican standoff between him, Kit, Jade, Borman and even Willow gets involved in this thing and even Grayson who has a lot to say in this episode it's quite funny to be honest with you so this Mexican standoff is happening then we go then the battle commences and the choreography is absolutely terrible we have the famous sorcerer and wizard Willow is with us he's gonna conjure up a little potion a little bit of a like wizardy bomb type thing and he's gonna sort it all out and he unleashes it into the middle of this badly choreographed fight and does he sort everything out with this unbelievably cool bomb no he doesn't he fucks everything up and then the guy from the office escapes with Alora again but not before Grayson who was an absolutely nothing character for two episodes now all of a sudden he starts explaining to all of us what the intricacies are of the possession that has happened for the guy from the office he knows all the terminologies and everyone's looking at him going like dude you don't know anything you're just like a squeaky little mouse that's been running around after us but apparently he does now because he's hot for Elora and he wants to rescue her so he goes over and he tries to rescue her from the horse in the middle of this battle and she refuses to be rescued of course by a man she refuses to be rescued she tells him get the fuck out of here man send someone better uh, what are you doing i'm rescuing you there's no one else available uh so after Willow fucks everything up, they disappear again and then we're kind of left in the same type of a chase moment that we've been having for the last two episodes where we're not really progressing and we're not really moving forward at all. So off they go on their mission to rescue Alora again for like the 15th time in uh, two and a half episodes. So there's this impending dark cloud that is speaking this foreign tongue and it's very menacing and it's very scary and there's only one person that can translate it. Is it Willow the sorcerer who knows the intricacies of all this land? No, it's Grayson again, the guy who didn't speak for two or three episodes but now all of a sudden he's a badass and he knows exactly what's going on he explains that it's crone and willow agrees with him and then tells him to shut the fuck up because i'm the sorcerer and don't be interrupting in my type of shit and you're kind of going dude this is completely and utterly childish this is like teenagers bickering you know more than me absolutely not i've got to like take two steps above you and put you in your place and then willow proceeds to do another exposition dump about swirling vortexes of rage and darkness that will chase us to the end of the earth and you're just thinking i don't know any of these words that you're saying there's nothing that i can relate it back to or reference because obviously it was just one movie 35 years ago so what is going on there must be 15 pages of dialogue that's exposition dumped all over this episode so alora escapes from the guy from the office and his crew and she's running through a forest and she's like and we get this scene where every one of our group every one of the fellowship are sitting around a wheel and no one knows how to fix the wheel on the carriage and it's supposed to be played as some sort of a joke slash jovial scene but for me it was a time waster an unfunny one and it was just like okay this is embarrassing i think it's broken just lift up the wagon and i'll slip it back up <laughs> seriously you can't just uh levitate it or something uh, no no it's really good having a sorcerer on this quest. It's really good having a sorcerer on this quest. I love that line and it epitomizes the entire show. What is the point of Willow the show? What is the point of him being there? In fairness to Warwick Davis, he's done his due diligence over the years and he's been in so many things. So it is great to see him make a few pound and actually get paid to do this gig. But 
this is a nothing gig and he's out of touch in terms of the acting chops as I said in the last review so where are we going why is the sorcerer here why can't we change the wheel on a carriage and why is there six people standing around a broken wheel for some sort of comedic presence I don't know it's it's absolutely trash so then we have Jade and Kit get into another lover's quarrel slash angsty teenager moment and Kit thinks that she's some sort of badass because she's been beating her at their sparring sessions for the last couple of years and then Jade kind of drops her head and says well no not really uh, I've been gaslighting you into thinking that you were better than you actually are and that is so ironic with shows like this and the rings of power because that is exactly what happens with cast crew across the board for these type of shows they're being gaslit and told by people in power that they're better than they are and then what happens you start believing it and you start spewing it and all of a sudden we're left with rings of power she hulk marvel movies lucasfilm disney films all garbage okay so now we get to the worst moment in the show so far alora is running through the forest suddenly it turns from extremely dark and scary and menacing and eerie into some sort of like green saturized beautiful land and then we come across two woods women yep I said that word woods women so basically it's just two lesbians that are sitting there with some of the worst dialogue in the history of humankind and they start being extremely creepy towards this young girl Alora, who's blonde and pretty and they start referencing that and it's just like Ugh, what the fuck what the fuck is going on and they're on they're coming for me oh we do not doubt that you do have a pleasing aspect and fine complexion. No! That's gross. So again, we have this unfolding of terrible dialogue, terrible characters, absolutely gross. And as soon as they come on screen, you are just wishing for their demise. And when it happens, it's so delicious and beautiful. So they actually assume and think for one second that they can enter into some sort of fisty cuffs with the dude from the office. Let's see how that pans out from. And you love to see it. You love to see these people who think that they can actually, first of all, pick up an axe, which would be almost impossible for someone of her stature. But again, with terrible dialogue, terrible characters like that inserted into the middle of this show, it's absolutely delicious to see them get lamped out of it the way this one did. So Elora takes off with the other lesbian, number two, and they start running. And not surprising, as soon as the guy from the office catches up with his buddies, this happens. You love to see it and there it is. So Alora has been captured again. So Kit takes off with Borman. They're headed towards the Slaughtered Lamb, which is an interesting reference in terms of that showing up in American Werewolf in London. I don't know whether it was on purpose or whether it was a mistake, but regardless, Kit goes with Borman. The group, the fellowship has broken apart and it's actually not bad because they finally have a conversation about her father and he actually tells her the full story. Eventually, it only took two and a half episodes. So you actually saw him? No, but I know what I know. How? Because if he were alive, if he'd come back, things would be different. So I don't know whether they purposefully left this open to interpretation in terms of Mad Mardigan actually coming back. I don't know how that would play, especially with Val Kilmer. But that seems to be where they were aiming with this conversation. And in fairness, it was actually a decent enough story and a decent enough scene when it was just Kit and Borman together out on their own and they're heading into this dark area towards the slaughter lamp. When they get there, it's gone and all that's left is a kind of a Mount Doom type of place. Willow has some sort of a vision and he knows where they're going and he knows that Alora's going there. So you know that they're all meeting up in this really dark place for... I guess what will be the final third of this episode the big battle scene and I'm sure it's going to be super exciting as well so when they finally reach this slaughtered lamb it's completely knocked and Borman goes down this well and when he's down there he finds one of these keys one of these keys that were alluded to at the beginning that goes into one of the armor suits and everyone becomes powerful and super powerful but he doesn't tell Kit they get up and they fight some I don't know where rats or some shit like that and it kind of all ends up in another Mexican standoff outside the slaughtered lamb everyone is there now everyone is here and we're in for the last big battle and it's completely dark and you can't really see too much so then we have the scene where Silas dies one of my favorite characters in the show we have the scene with the guy from the office he's kind of turned back to being good because he's had a battle with Jade and she's kicked the shit out of him and then there's this supposed to be this big emotional scene where both people die but there's not really too much emotion because we're not given the character strength and the character depth that we're supposed to be getting all that we're getting is exposition dumps and loads of fancy words that we don't know and we don't know what they're referenced to Thank you. 
So Grayson is hurt. He's obviously got jabbed in the neck as well. So he's going to become possessed. I guess that's why he knew so much at the beginning because he knew that he was going to have it at the very end. So then they're heading on their journey and it continues on. And it would be great if we actually had cohesive storytelling where we would actually engage with the characters and look forward to seeing the next episode. But we don't. What we get is this. I don't even know where in the middle of I do. Knocknar. We're in the middle of Knocknar. We've got Metallica playing in the background. We have absolutely no character development. We have absolutely nothing good to say about this episode. And don't you just know it, we will be hitting the next episode right after this because that's what has to be done. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit share, please, and see can we get it out there. Cheers.